We want to give a quick demonstration of best fit Bayesian estimation analysis early on so you'll have a feel for how it looks and runs prior to the rest of day two. If you'd like to walk along with me and press the buttons yourself, the model is provided in the 2.2 demonstration folder. There is also an Excel spreadsheet with some of the regional information needed for the Bayesian analyses. BestFit was built to provide the user with an easy to use intuitive software that can do all the sophisticated statistical analysis for you. Bayes' theorem and Bayesian estimation analysis can sound intimidating, but BestFit makes it straightforward for the user. The demonstration will take the input data set and the regional information, regional skew, and rank all runup results and create different Bayesian analyses. I'll start with just using the systematic input data and create additional runs, adding each piece of information to show how the results change. Hopefully, you'll see both how easy and fast BestFit runs, as well as see the value gained by adding additional information to the at site systematic gauge record. In the model, there are three input data sets from day one. They each build on the other, adding the historical and paleo flood information to the systematic record. I will start with the systematic only as the first Bayesian analysis. First, create a new Bayesian estimation analysis. For ease, the names are already typed out in the spreadsheet so that they can be copied and pasted in. Now I'll modify the properties, selecting the input data and distribution I want. Log Pearson type 3 is the standard distribution currently used for USACE risk assessment studies. But beyond those two changes, that's all the user has to do. Now I'll click the estimation button to kick off the run. Remember, BestFit is running hundreds of thousands of evolutions in the analysis in just seconds. Okay, we now have the results. You might notice at a glance, the posterior predictive is outside the credible interval. This isn't an error, but think of it as a way of telling you that you need more information to decrease the knowledge uncertainty in your analysis. Now let's create another run. This time, I will just make a copy of the previous run and give it a new name. Again, I'll just copy the name from the Excel spreadsheet to make it quick. Now, this time, all I have to change is the input data and it's ready to run. You will see that we can create multiple Bayesian analyses very quick in BestFed. Okay, now the run is done. Notice with just the addition of the historic data, the posterior predictive is now within the credible interval. If I flip back and forth from the systematic only to the systematic plus historic, you can see the change in the results and how the uncertainty or credible interval has been reduced. Now I'll run another analysis. Again, I'll create a copy from the previous and give it a new name. As the name indicates, I'll be adding regional skew to this analysis. I don't need to change the input data this time. This time, I need to uncheck the Use Default Flat Priors box. Click on the Skew Distribution box. Change the distribution to Normal. Add the regional SKU data and press enter. Now this analysis is ready to run. That's it. Remember regional SKU will be the primary flat prior entered into a Bayesian analysis and you'll almost always use normal distribution. Now that the analysis is done, again I like to flip back and forth between the analyses to see the change in the results as you should expect, with each additional piece of information, the credible interval should get tighter and the posterior predictive will calculate closer to the posterior mode. Okay, now I'll add rainfall runoff results. I'll create a copy because again, I am building on top of the previous analysis because I want to use everything I previously added. This time, the only edits I need to make are to the prior distributions for quantiles. I need to first check the enable priors on the quantile box. This lets the program know to use the prior quantiles. Then uncheck the use single quantile box because the standard is to use three quantiles. 
Now, if I was using NOAA Atlas 14 to produce the rainfall runoff results, I would use the 10 year, 100 year, and 1,000 year AEP values. However, for this example, Blakely Mountain, a site-specific precipitation frequency study was available. So I will use the 100 year, 1,000 year, and 10,000 year AEP values. Now I'll enter the prior information. Currently, only normal distribution is available for the priors. I'll enter the mean and standard deviation for each AEP. That's it. Now I'll run it. And once I've added the rainfall runoff results, I like to highlight them. So when the run ends, I quickly change their color to red. All I have to do to change the color is right click on the quantile prior, select it, and change it. All right, one last run. Once again, I'll create a copy from the previous analysis and give it a new name. This time, I need to change the input data to include the paleo flood information. Once that is changed, I can run the analysis. When paleo flood information is available, it often has the most influence on the results. That's because it tends to either extend the total record length and or it has tighter confidence bounds than rainfall runoff results, for example. Okay, I now have five Bayesian estimation analyses. I can flip through each to visually see the value gained. Notice a large change from the final to the first analysis. Then look at the incremental gain from one to the next analysis with the additive information. Or I can compare the data tables looking at the spread in the credible interval or the posterior predictive value. With the systematic only, the posterior predictive is roughly 575,000 out of the million year, 1e minus 6, but is reduced by more than half by the final analysis at 232,000. Notice the credible interval has a difference of about 127,000 as compared to the original systematic only which had around 390,000 difference. One other place to look is the log Pearson type 3 results, especially the skew. Here you may see the skew bounce around a little, but because the credible intervals are tightened, the posterior predictive curve continues to move to the right, even with more positive skew values calculated in the final analysis. Hopefully you saw how easy and fast BestFit is to use, and the reason why you should add as much data or information as possible to the Bayesian estimation analysis. The rest of the day, you will dive deeper into the different parts of the BestFit Bayesian estimation analysis.